I was like, hey, I think I'm interested in you. If if it's not going to work, let's just um, cut this chit chat in here and there because uh, I might end up getting hurt at the end of the day. And he kissed him. I really want to see you right now. I was like, woo, I found. <laughs> Guys, how would you feel when a lady starts the conversation and ends up proposing? Ladies, how would you feel? When you don't even end up to propose, but starts the conversation. Does it make you cheap? Fortunately, in the story of Ya and Kofi, Ya actually started a conversation and even ended up proposing to Kofi. And now they are happily married. The questions are, how were they able to meet? Aside or odds, how were they able to pull through? And most importantly, how can we, you and I, learn from this story? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ambassador Vix, and I am back with another awesome video. Before we hurriedly move into the conversation, just know that Ya hails from Kumase, but moved from Kumase to Kof Town for something that she stated in the video. And as at that time, Kofi also was a volunteer all the way from Germany to Ghana to volunteer for a particular hospital. And that is where they both met. Let us move into the video. To begin with, me call secondary school, Beko. You know, Beko is closer to Koforidia. Mm. Ain't you know, um, me call four years until we drew third year. No? We decided to register for Novdek Key School no, for the third year students. So now, you ever try your hands on the Novdek to see how was you know, how the was itself would be. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, when I registered, me register Novdek, no, mm -hmm. I think that it was in Kuforidia, Kuforidia was the center for me. Uh, and see, I stayed, the main town of Eastern mm -hmm. region. Town. I stayed with, um, my friend a friend of mine in Kof town sometimes i was also at um tafo anita in tafo shout out <laughs> and then precious in Kof town mm -hmm. and that was how uh, i got to know more about Kof town mm -hmm. you see writing my of dead there for like it took almost a month i fell in love with the city mm -hmm. of as a city it's a mr timinez in training or clinic house no and no more your margin say like you baby so you would have to um, choose a place that you want to do the clinic house at. So I told a friend of mine, Abigail, <laughs> that um, I know Koforidia, I wrote my Nobdek there, and then it was a very beautiful place. So if she would like to go with me. Mm. And then at the end of the day, she also wanted to explore and know new places. So we both decided say, we will go to Koforidia. So that is what brought me to the SDA hospital in Cove Town. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was also there. <laughs> After her narration, she moved further to tell us how she was able to meet Kofi and how she fell in love with Kofi at first sight. So I can say that this is love at first sight, right? Does this thing exist? Just let me know. Yes, that's a clinic house, no. Because I am a friend in my study or ANC, which is the antenatal clinic. And then uh, at the ANC, Kofi came with a different volunteer from Germany. Mm. And see that particular volunteer, his name is Simon. Simon was there at the ANC with me. And then um, he used to talk about Kofi. But back then, I am a master teacher, but I not met him. One Friday, Kofi came to the um anc honestly immediately i saw him like, hey my heart was beating so fast like is it this young gentleman and you know <laughs> kofi is very quiet he doesn't talk much and all that and honestly speaking i'm also attracted to such like these kind of people who don't talk so much who are quiet and reserved and then he, he just came standing with jina kwainanu as if <laughs> As if nothing is happening. We be so said to say mm, that's the basic question. And then right. where did he? Uh, and Kofi answered like happily. But after he answered it, he didn't like come up with any communication or so. So I think the next day he came and peacefully again. went back to my maternity <laughs> ward. Mm. So the next day he came back again and then I was like, hey, can we take a picture together? Because I, I liked him, you know? Mm. I remember back then he was wearing these black jeans and wide waist and hey, like exactly the type of man I wanted and I liked him. Mm, <laughs> That's nice. a good Could we, can we take a picture fine, fine, fine. and then he was like, oh, why not? And then we took the picture and then 
um i was like so how do i get the pictures back then i was using an android phone mm. and what did you say you have to consider from this side let's see if you remember the story oh from that side of course i remember <laughs> then i said patrol now me will number mm-hmm. me, me has and they will pictures. Like the pictures oh. now, mm-hmm. 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 and that's how i i got the number of my wonderful beautiful wife so um computer and number started, and we started, we started chatting, chatting a little here and there here and there um coffee was being a little bit difficult in the beginning <laughs> difficult skeptical well i don't take it in that angle i believe that people coming from different countries or people of different nationalities have different culture and they have different ways of behaving just as hofstede you know stated in his um, cultural dimension theory of which he explained that people coming from different countries have you know different ways of behaving we can talk of masculinity we can talk of uncertainty avoidance we can talk of power dy- dynamics and all that so basically Hofstede was trying to say that people coming from different walks of life especially from different countries have ways of you know um, perceiving life so if you are to the chance to understand how Germans behave as compared to Ghanaians she would have come to the realization that Germans or the Germans behave differently as compared to Kenya. So you don't expect Kofi to just come like that, okay? So yeah, just sometimes when you go to a place, you just have to understand people from their own point before you draw a conclusion. He wasn't skeptical, he wasn't difficult, but just that, you know, the, the, the culture doesn't match. Yeah, the culture doesn't match. You know, like you we were chatting and all that, but it's it's like at a point sometimes he was so nice, he comes around, he chats, sometimes he was so straightforward and I, I couldn't really predict him. Mm, that one but he was, had a reason, yeah. Like first of all, before I met my wife I never had a like a proper serious relationship mm-hmm. with anyone before it was well, just meeting and, and meet and greet and stuff. <laughs> and Secondly, for us volunteers mm-hmm. in Ghana, we had like a group of mentors, Ghanaians, who were mentoring us very well and very nicely and were always there for us if we had any questions. But they, and also like Ghanaian friends mm-hmm. and Ghanaian work colleagues, kind of warned us in a way that you have to be careful with Ghanaian ladies. I'm sure they probably the Ghanaian ladies did the same to the fellow mm-hmm. um, female volunteers and said, you have to be careful with the Ghanaian boys and so on. Mm-hmm. You know how, it, like in Ghana, I've experienced it myself. You talk a lot about the other gender somehow, like the ladies are not correct. No, the men are not correct. <laughs> like that. So it also entered my mind somehow. Mm-hmm. I was like, so- hey. Ready. I have to be careful. Mm. That is why I don't subscribe to these people with this medical mindset. What happened to us Africans? What happened to us Ghanaians? Why do we go about painting ourselves black? We've been on the channel to talk about positivity about Africa, positivity about Ghana, but you'll be here talking about positivity whilst our people will be, will be there painting ourselves black to people. What happened to us Africans? I know that the Western media portrays negativity about Africa, but it looks as if that Africans, especially Ghanaians, we, we say negative stuff about people. Ghanaian men are that, Ghanaian women are that. What are we going to gain out of this thing? According to Yah, Kofi got this kind of perception because we Ghanaians feed them with this, you know, untrue story. This is hasty generalization and it's, and it's a fallacy. What are you going to gain out of it? Maybe a section of maybe Ghanaian men or Ghanaian women behave this way. It doesn't come to the conclusion that all Ghanaian men or all Ghanaian women are that. That thing, we are supposed to stop that. I think this is the right platform for me to say that if I can't say anything on any platform, this is the platform I'm going to say that it's not something that we need to encourage. We are painting ourselves black, we are painting negativity on ourselves and that thing is supposed to stop. It's supposed to stop. It's not funny anymore. How how how, oh, how, how will I find be? out if she's, if she's like correct or person. no? She she just want I don't know obruni or money <laughs> or whatever. Mm, so that was like exactly. those two two reasons were I guess the main the main cause reason why for, you were a bit skeptical. Mm, I'll use that yeah, word. Sometimes my chatting was a bit basa basa. A bit basa. <laughs> one time we were chatting, not knowing one of uh, his Ghanaian friends had already told me. 
Ghanaian ladies here yeah, for all you know he just want to be a jack let me use this word quote in quote so we were chatting and he was like oh do you just want to be a jack and i got so furious i was so angry and then i just told him my mind and blocked him because of what kofi told ya yeah, ya yeah ended up blocking kofi and i'm blocking kofi the next day that is 24 hour blockage <laughs> That is where the story gets interesting. Let us know what follows. After blocking him, I was crying. <laughs> I mean, I've working out bare four times. Like, hey, sometimes when I'm chatting with him and he's not responding well, he's coming straight, straight and all that, and I'll be sad and I'll be crying. The next day, I unblocked him and a lot of, like, messages came apologizing he didn't mean to say that someone said that to him and all that and that day i even fell sick and i couldn't go to work <laughs> because i was so broken out <laughs> broken out today yeah. and then i couldn't go to work so he he was like are you at work i want to see you and i was like nah may i remember fear and he was like can i come and visit you hey you see oh bro you best me and then he came over and then you prepared Indomie for me. I prepared me. Indomie for him for the first time. And the funny thing is, you know, I, I thought Obroni oh, oh, people they don't eat a lot. So I prepared half Indomie. Yeah, I think you didn't do well. A foreigner is telling you that I'm wanting to visit you. That could be the avenue for you to have sold our staple dishes or our local dishes to Kofi. You could have sold um, Fufu. You could have sold Banku. You could have, could have even sold TZ and Apesie and all that. What you sold was Indomie. Indomie is not our food. Indomie is not our dish. I don't know whether as at that time, that is what you, you had. But at least you could have sold something, carry something. Add one or two, you know, accompaniment to, you know, spice things up and give it to Kofi. And he would have, you know, appreciated it. Anytime that we get a platform, Africans, let us sell ourselves to the people positively. Sell our culture to them. Culture com uh, comprises of food, what we wear, even what we believe in. Sell it to them. And trust me, they are going to buy it. And within the first few minutes, it was gone. And I was so happy. Oh, he really liked it and all that, you know. And then, like, we talked a lot. And then after, before he left, I was like, hey, I think I'm interested in you. If... If it's not going to work, let's just um, cut this chit chat in here and there because uh, I might end up getting hurt at the end of the day. And he was like, And now a lady has proposed to you something that really happens in this world. I want to know how Kofi reacted, how Kofi took it, and um, Kofi's answer. It is obvious that Kofi also liked her because if he didn't like her, he wouldn't have even constantly been having conversations with her. Let us know what happened. He was like, um he need to think about it um he can't promise me that we can start something he doesn't know how it's going to be i think back then you were going for a workshop or something mm, we had a like a mm -hmm. seminar in between i think around that time we were in ghana for already three months or so mm -hmm. so we had a, a seminar as a uh, the whole group of volunteers um, in kokrobite and accra so and I said, okay, you there, let me let me go to the seminar and I'll get back. Like, we'll be talking mm -hmm. throughout but, and then I'll get back to you. And I think I said on Monday or so mm -hmm. and I'm back. Yeah. Uh, you know, like for me, a lot of things went, my heart was, was already with her, but a lot of things also went through my mind. Like, mm. a, sm a small part was still thinking about what some other Ghanaians told me. Mm -hmm. But my main things were like, okay, I know I'll be here. When we met was in January. I know mm -hmm. I'll be here until oh, end, months, end of yeah. August or so. And after that, how will the it distance. continue? Mm -hmm. I don't want just like I don't want to just start anything here and then break her heart. Uh, like oh, oh you're uh -huh. really considerate. <laughs> Back then, I also knew, okay, uh, when I'm coming back to Germany, I don't have, like, financially, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just about to start university, so it's not like I can visit her all the time or let her come all the time so easily or even support her all the time with a lot of things. And so I was like, 
okay do i have to start it or not uh, let's see <laughs> hmm, i don't know and then funny enough that like i think that weekend i also tested one of i think mm, she was my former german teacher in, in high school mm -hmm. and like i just wanted a, an opinion from uh Someone different. Someone, Someone who is older yeah. than me, has mm -hmm. more life experience, but at the same time is not family. And so that I didn't have many, so many people. And I, after school, I, I got a bit closer to that, my teacher. And she said, oh, start it. Start <laughs> it. You never know where it will end. Just start it. The feelings Just are there. So start mm -hmm. it. And like that was not uh, the main reason why I started, but it I'm was like, a, yeah, I know, I understand. It gave me sometimes, a, a yeah, push, you need the last someone push to, to say, yeah, this is right, mm, go it, for it. You it know? gave me the last push, like the last five percent, to say, okay, I'm in. Let's mm -hmm. start. Let's see how it continues. And then I came back from the seminar. And, yeah, he came. Kofi was supposed to meet me on on Monday, and then he came back from the seminar on Sunday, and then he mm, tested. The I really want to see you right now. I was like. <laughs> and then uh, he came over i think he even cried a bit he, we were both happy and it, it was strange it was nice i just couldn't believe that it's it is like officially and finally started like mm -hmm. it was i i still remember that day vividly i was so happy i was overwhelmed and yeah and that was how we actually started yes and that is how they met it's actually a very long video so i just you know tried as much as possible to shorten it you can go on their youtube channel i've located their youtube link and the video link at the youtube video description try as much as possible visit their channel and watch their full video to get a full grasp of the information let me know what you learned out of this story should the lady open the conversation should a lady propose to a gentleman Keep the comments coming. Once again, my name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time in another episode. Sokoto, Ma, Yan, Day.